in this video, I work on a, I forget the year, linking navigator. Now this customer contacted me just to take care of the outside, so no interior work. It was just a basic wash and wax service, so no paint correction or anything like that. And a wash and wax is one of the nine services I recommend you start off by offering in your detailing business. So if you are interested in starting a detailing business, check the description box down below for this guide on the nine services you can offer in your business. It has the type of service, what's included in those services, what the benefits of those service, the time frame it takes, it has a bunch of information. So if you are interested in starting your business, check the description box down below for this guide to help you with your services. Overall, this was a very, very straightforward detail. Again, a Lincoln Navigator, a wash and wax, nothing crazy, super simple. In total, I think, because this was a few months back now, I think it took me around four hours. I think I charged like 220, 230 around there to do this, uh, to do the wash and wax and to clean up the wheels. Again, very, very, very straightforward detail. Not a lot of work. The biggest thing was just the size of the Navigator, but in terms of the actual work, not that difficult at all. So throughout this video, you'll learn just the process, the tools I'm using, why do what. And I really wanted to show you like just what it's like to be there on the field working, especially for you mobile guys. So if you're just starting off with your business and you're very excited to start, but you're also very nervous on you don't know how to, you know, once you get there, what do you do? What is it like? How does it feel? Yada, yada. So in this video, I also just put like a lot of just me walking around doing just normal stuff not really just cleaning but like setting up the me setting up the wheel cleaning setting up the cleaning just so you can see like what it's like when you're actually there out in the field it's not a big deal but I just want to give you guys a more a better perspective on like how it's like when you're actually when you're out there working on someone else's vehicle what do you do how do you move do you whatever whatever so i'm also including that a lot of that type of footage in this video as well let's go ahead and get into it Okay, so starting off the video is just gonna be it's gonna be me prepping up for the wheels and tires, which is the first step of this cleaning. So not much activity here other than getting the tools and products and getting ready to actually clean the wheels and tires. Now, because the vehicle is really dirty, I will take the entire bucket. Usually, if it's not that dirty, I'll just take the one or two brushes that I need to get the cleaning done. Um, but since this one was really dirty, um, I'm actually gonna fill up the bucket with water to really uh, just give myself a better, a better uh, setup for cleaning these really dirty wheels and tires. Um, and the product here is super clean, diluted 10 to 1. In this particular wheel that I'm cleaning, I'm using the sprayer, but when I move on to the next three wheels, I'm actually using a pump sprayer. Um, so I, in this one, it is just me pulling the trigger, but then I do move on to a pump sprayer, which made life a bit easier. Uh, so I'm here, I'm actually gonna fill up the bucket, uh, not all the way, maybe, just under half uh, that way the the I can continually rinse off the brushes while they're in the bucket um, I also rinse off the brushes as I'm going um, but that's just another way to keep the brushes a little cleaner because again the wheels and tires are really dirty um, so here just gonna use the uh, this will probably definitely one of, one of my more favorite tire brushes um, it doesn't really work so well on really big tires because it doesn't cover enough real estate uh, but for this one, it works really, really well. I, that, uh, for me, this is like the perfect tire brush. Um, but when you're working on like on super huge, like Jeep, like big truck tires, it's a little more time consuming because it just doesn't cover as much real estate. But in this scenario, it worked great to really agitate um, the wheels and the tires in this particular uh, setup. And I'm gonna use the big brush here to get most of the dirt off of the wheel faces. I know a lot of people like to just spray a lot of cleaner and then use like one small brush and make sure there's like suds coming out and stuff. My thing is I'm just trying to finish this as quick as I can. I don't care about the suds. I don't care about making it look nice. I don't care about the whatever. I just, I'm gonna use the biggest brush to get most of the work, most of the gunk off. And then I'm gonna use a smaller brush like this to get the edges. Use like a towel or follow the, touch up any spots with a small lug nut brush or a towel. And then I'm out of there because I just, I don't, there's no need for me to just use one small brush that takes like double the time, but it looks not like, it looks cooler or you know, it's better for the camera. No, I'm just trying to, I'm gonna use a big brush for the big chunks and then I'll follow up the details with a smaller brush. And as you can tell, it, you know, one good pass with the uh, uh, Super Clean 10 to 1 with the tire brush, it got off at least 90% of that gunk on the tires. Um, I do one more pass later just to make sure I get everything off, but as you can tell, one pass already took off most of the gunk, most of the mud from the tire. Then I'm switching to the fender wells. I spray the cleaner and I'm using the tire brush again because it's really gunked up. I wanted something very, uh, 
with short bristles to really agitate as thoroughly as I can. So that's why for the initial pass, I use the tire brush on the inner fender wells. Um, and this isn't like caked on dry, like concrete dirt. It didn't take much effort as you can clearly tell to remove the mud, but it was, I did want stronger bristle br um, bristles than the fender brush that I just used. So again, here goes me touching up the small parts that, that just need to be touched up. So I'm gonna spray the wheel again, spray the tire again, just to give it one more go because it was really dirty. So I just wanna ensure that I did, you know, take off as much as I could. Uh, but as you can tell, not that much brown is coming off. So that means, and it's, you know, primarily white, just, it's just white. So that means most of the dirt did come off. So that was good. And then I'm gonna switch over to the small lug nut brush. Oh, first I'm gonna clean the, uh, the fenders again, just again, just to touch them up again. The first pass will get, this is like compounding and polishing the first phase which is just to get the gunk of the mud off and I'm following up the second time just to you know to as you know to polish it just to get the any remaining bits out that I may have missed and then I'm gonna rinse it all down and then here's what I'm talking about just touching up any last any last spots that I needed so I'm gonna hit it with the uh, lug nut brush one more time. And sometimes I use a lug nut brush, sometimes I just use my fingers, sometimes I use a towel. Just depends on the wheel and like how much I think I missed or how much I think I need to spin on there. Uh, so again, sometimes lug nut brush, sometimes it's just my fingers, sometimes it's a towel. And I just, in this car in particular, it was actually like right now, it was already in a very muddy situation. Like there was a lot of water and dirt. I didn't bother moving the car now because I know I'm gonna spray a lot of water on the wheels and tires. So I wanted to have the, I wanted to make a big mess in one spot. Once I got done with most of the water, I'm gonna back it up and move it back so I can work in a cleaner surface area. Because if I try to move it right now, I'm still gonna create a mess. So I'd rather create a mess in one spot rather than work in a, in a dirty spot, move it back, work in a dirty spot, move it back. So I'm just gonna try to keep it in one spot make a mess there and then move it back and then here me just again showing you guys what it's like just to be on site and actually working and and just you know day-to-day -day operations here so i'm just wiping down the brake dust that I have from cleaning those wheels and tires and moving on to the next phase and that's going to be watching the vehicle i'm going to go ahead and start with the roof and then work my way down First, it's the tires, wheels, and fender wheels most of the time. Then add the actual wash, and you're gonna wash the vehicle from top, working your way down. And I am gonna use a two bucket wash method. Here in particular, I was trying to get those suds and move them to the second bucket, because there was a lot of suds there. But this is a two bucket wash method. 80% of the time, I don't use a two bucket wash method, but because this car was really dirty, uh, I just wanted to keep the uh, the, the wash mitt and, and water uh, cleaner, so that's why I did opt in for the two bucket wash method. Typically, I'll do a rinse list, but with the vehicle being this dirty, uh, it was just better to use the uh, two bucket wash method. Now, in this scenario, yeah, it would it would help to just use a foam cannon, spray it down, and just wash the vehicle like that. But that's just not something I have or uh, use. But that is an option where you could just, in this particular situation, it does call for it. So you could just foam it down and immediately go for the wash. And again, that's a great platform. I'm only 5'5", so typically I'm gonna need a platform to get higher. But I highly, highly recommend, those are Gorilla platform platforms. Uh, I buy, bought mine locally. Obviously, they sell them online, but you can find them at Home Depot or Office Depot. I highly, highly recommend those platforms to work off of because I use it for both, as you can see, me to get higher as a ladder and also as a workbench, depending on what I'm working on. So highly recommend those Gorilla platforms. And because I'm using both the GoPro and the camera, I'm definitely not gonna speed up these videos because that'd just be very nauseous to speed up the go the head cam and then speed it back to the uh, DSLR camera. So I'm just, that's also why I'm using, playing it at normal speed and not really speeding it up. But I will work the entire hood and I'll, I'll work the entire area of where I need the ladder. So if, if I need to reach the windshield, I'm gonna clean the windshield because I'm gonna need the ladder. If I need to clean like the middle part of the hood, I'm gonna clean it now because I have the the, the ladder right there if you know if I need to reach the entire hood with the ladder I'm gonna clean the entire hood with the ladder that way I can clean whatever areas I need help with with the ladder once I'm done with that and rinse it off I can put the ladder aside and no longer need it until however long later 
So I'll get through with the entire areas I can't reach. So I can about to stand up and on the bench and then just rinse everything off. Once I rinse everything off and, I, and I've and i handled all the areas I need the ladder with, I'll put the ladder aside. I'll no longer lead it. I'll have a, a better uh, um, working area to work because I don't have that ladder in the way. And then I'll work everything else. So here it's going to be, and this is, you know, if you have a pressure washer, it'll work in this specific situation. But the workaround to not having a pressure washer on a really dirty vehicle like this is I just simply spray a little bit of APC cleaner um, on the really uh, bad areas, let it soak for a little bit. And then I'll uh, rinse it down with the, uh, with, the, um, with the garden hose on the jet setting. Uh, again, nowhere near as effective as a pressure washer. But it does help a little bit, especially if you let the APC cleaner just kind of sit there for a little bit. So it does definitely help. Is it anywhere near the pressure washer? No, but that's okay. Don't think you absolutely need one. Okay, now started the wash process. Working from top to bottom. That way I'm not overworking myself. Because the vehicle is very dirty, I will give it two passes for the most part. And my favorite wash mitts are Chanel wash mitts now. I'm just a huge fan of, of those. Th that one specifically is a chemical guys, I believe. Uh, but I have a, a you know few different Chanel wash mitts from different uh, from from uh, different brands. So I'm just a big fan of Chanel wash mitts. I, I specifically don't have like a specific like brand Chanel wash mitt, but just in general, Chanel wash mitts are are definitely my go-to wash mitts now. And the soap I'm using here is actually just Meguiar's Gold Class that you buy locally. Uh, just their consumer level ones. I mean, for, I mean, I'm just cleaning the vehicle here. I'm not, you know, doing anything too fancy. So, I think it's like 12 bucks or something. And uh, I mean, it works perfectly fine. So I just, I again, just bought it locally. Nothing crazy. Nothing fancy. Don't think I'm spending 50 bucks on just a gallon of soap or anything. All right, and moving on to the back side of the vehicle. Now, one thing I'll say is that I was talking on the phone for a good portion of the vehicle which was kind of slowed me down a little bit and I was okay with that just because I wasn't in that big of a rush but if I am like if I am if I'm not on the phone I could typically work a lot faster but when you're talking on the phone you kind of just kind of you pace yourself so you don't, you're not breathing as hard and you're not talking as fast um, so just keep that in mind so I, I would be moving a lot faster but I also knew I had, I had the GoPro on and moving too fast it just gets you a bit nauseous so that's why I slowed down I wasn't moving as fast once I take off the GoPro uh, and I, kind of, I do move a bit faster, but I was just keeping those two variables in mind of I have the GoPro on and I'm kind of talking on the phone So those two kind of slow me down a bit And now here I'm prepping up for the uh, claying process So you, as you can see I moved the vehicle back and that's where it's gonna stay now I, I, I took it away from all the water that I was that I, that I had created around it So I moved it back so I could work on the dry or for the most part dry surface area and now that's, I'm using Optimum No Rinse for the clay loop. That's why I put Optimum No Rinse in that bucket. That's going to be the clay loop right there in the bucket itself with the clay mitt. That's a nanoskin clay mitt. As well as using um, Optimum No Rinse as a clay loop in a spray bottle. So I'm using, I'm having the nanoskin wash mitt in the bucket of ONR as well as using an ONR bottle, spray bottle, just in case I need it. And then grabbing my two wash uh, dry towels as I usually do. One's gonna be a waffle weave drying towel to get the, the majority of the water off. The second one to uh, wipe off any streaks is gonna be a microfiber drying towel. And here I'm working the top. Now the, the roof is always gonna be the worst when it comes to clean just because that's the biggest surface area and it's flat. So the debris, gunk, whatever's gonna, whatever falls on the vehicle is gonna definitely stay on the roof. So in this particular situation, the roof was very bad, and it had some type of um, and you'll see there in a bit, but it had some it some uh, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't coming off just with cling. So here I use uh, 
some uh, O&R off the Mom no Rinse, spread it into the towel, and then I just gently rub a little bit. And it was coming off like that, but it wasn't coming off with just regular uh, cling. So this took a bit more time to uh, agitate off the roof. Now, okay, who's gonna look at the roof? Probably no one. You know, is that an absolutely necessary thing you have to do? You know, it depends on how much they're paying you and what the expectations are, but I just went ahead and did it just because I was already up there and didn't want to leave that gunk on there. So it did take a bit more time because it was across the entire roof, but it just, you know, part of the job. And I'm a huge fan of the Nanoskin uh, Clay Mitt. Um, I, pr I prefer that much more than the Clay Bar, which I still have on hand just in case I need it for something. But I definitely, uh, and there I used I used um, the APC as a clay lube by accident. I sprayed it once with the uh, APC. But yeah, I, I highly, highly, highly uh, would rather choose the, the uh, Nanoskin um, Mitt, Clay Mitt, rather than a Clay Bar. My personal preference, it's just easier for me, I can work faster. If I drop it, I can just rinse it off and keep on going. And it's just easier to use in my opinion. Now the, the sides of the vehicle were mildly contaminated. It was nowhere near as bad as the roof or the hood. Um, but so generally speaking, if, if you don't have overspray on the vehicle, then you'll usually breeze through the sides depending on how big the vehicle is. But typically speaking, the sides are nowhere near as bad as the roof or the hood. Um, if they are really bad, it's maybe just one has been so long since they've clayed it, or two, there's overspray on it. And if there is overspray, that adds so much more time to the vehicle. Um, so you do, you know, that's one of the things where you want to kind of clarify if there is overspray on the customer's vehicle because it will add so, uh, depending on how severe the, the overspray was, but it can definitely add so much more time to the overall detail. Um, like I, I personally charge a different price for overspray removal, even though it's still technically clean, it is a lot more work and a lot more time consuming. Um, and here I'm moving to the drying process. I sped it up because you know not much for her to see. But I again I use the waffle weave towel to get the 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 most of the water off, and then I follow that up with the microfiber uh, drying towel to remove any last streaks that may be there from the waffle weave. And typically I'll use a Metro Sidekick Blaster to blow off any water from any nooks and crannies. In this situation, I didn't because I forget why, but typically 80% of the time, I'll use forced air to get any uh, water out of the, um, out of any tight areas. And this is just showing you here the bucket that I used. That's where I had the clay mitt, the two wash, the wash towels, uh, and different products. And I just, and that's why it's so helpful to have that platform because I don't have to bend down all the way. I can just hold it, I can put it on that platform and it is so much easier to reach. Now going to the waxing part uh, phase, this is just a quick glimpse of like the speed I was moving at. I'm gonna brush it right here so the video goes a lot quicker because it's just literally me applying wax. But um, I'm using here Chemical Guys Black Light. Now sometimes I, depending on how, you know, depending on the vehicle or if I care to use it, sometimes I'll use the, um, my polisher with a six, five inch pad to apply the wax. Uh, honestly, it comes down to like, just do I feel like getting the machine out or not? In this situation, again, I was already moving slow. I wasn't in that big of a rush. So I was just doing it by hand. Um, but there's quite a few times where I'll just get out the polisher to uh, apply the, the sealant or the wax or whatever I'm using uh, quicker than by hand. And the spray I'm using uh, is Chemical Guys V7. Uh, it's just to get, it's just to make life a little easier to uh, keep it lubricated to wipe off the wax. Um, you can use like a, a quick detailer. Uh, I mean, I, I've used ONR uh, ONR as a clay lube to wipe it off. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter if you're using. It's just something to help lubricate the surface to help remove the wax or sealant off quicker. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, and moving on to the front of the hood, the grill. This is gonna be very typical where, again, they don't clean it. it just the water and gunk sits on there, so it kinda just, uh, it just dries onto the grill. 
So we weren't going for perfection here. I wasn't trying to make it, you know, show car ready, but I just wanted to give it a nice facelift overall. So I went ahead and just used a towel with Optimum No Rinse, my go-to for just about everything. If it wasn't coming off with that, I would have used just APC and then followed that up with ONR. Um, but it was coming off enough with the Optimum No Rinse. So I literally just took a towel, uh, wrapped my finger around it, put Optimum No Rinse on it, and just agitated the areas. Again, not going for perfection here, but just wanted to remove a good chunk of the just dried up gunk that was on there. And as you can tell, like just a little bit of work, not going for perfection, makes a huge difference in the overall appearance of the vehicle. And this really comes down to managing expectations. If you're just starting off as a business and you're like, you think you have to go through every last swirl, scratch, or like dirt that's on the vehicle, that's simply not the case. You have to manage the customer's expectation and say, look, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna look 10 times better. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And cleaning the second part, but I just went ahead and uh, sped it up that way. You can see it in, in, a, in a quicker time frame instead of me just rambling on for nothing. Now one thing you do want to keep in mind is make sure you're drying it, that way you're actually seeing the true results. Sometimes when you just put water over it, it's going to look cleaner, and then once it dries, you're like, oh man, it just, I didn't do anything. So make sure you, you are drying it, and you're seeing the actual results rather than the water just uh, covering up the actual dirt underneath. Okay, and that's the, those are the wheels and tires. Afterwards, I haven't dressed them yet, so that's what I'm gonna do that, just showing the before. And yes, there's a little bit of dirt and gunk up there. Could I wipe it off? Yes, but again, as soon as they start driving, dirt and gunk's gonna kick up up there. So I'd say that was enough. Again, that was about 80% removing the dirt, especially from how it started. So not going for perfection, checking the gas cap, always check for that. But I wasn't going for perfection, so I'm not gonna wipe that down because again, as soon as they start driving, the the five seconds after they start driving, it's gonna get dirty again. So that was good enough to go ahead and start dressing the tires and fender wheels. And for the dressing, I'm gonna use Meguiar's Hyper Dressing, I did it four to one. And then just checking the door jam, that was, you know, needed a lot of work. The car itself needed a lot of work, both inside and outside. Uh, the customer had just wanted the outside work done. Um, that includes the door jams, because that's, that's definitely a big part of the detail is cleaning those door jams. So even, you know, I always recommend you clean the door jams no matter what service, whether interior or exterior, I definitely always recommend you clean the, um, you always clean the, the door jams. And it's just one of the things where like, it just, I, me personally, I just feel like it completes the detail, making sure the door jams are up to par and looking, you know. Okay, and as I said, gonna be applying uh, tire dressing to the tire with Meguiar's Hyper Dressing. Now here, I'm just spraying directly to the fender wheel because it's so much area. So I'm just gonna spray, I'm gonna spray it very liberally onto the fender wheel. And I'm just gonna let it sit there for a good while and let it spread on its own. And you can see a better uh, example here where I'm just literally, I'm not gonna wipe it down yet. And I don't get it on camera. I do wipe it down, just not on camera. But I'm just let it sit there and do its thing as I go and work on the tires. Now, if you could tell that when I sprayed Meguiar's hybrid dressing in the, inside of fender wells, it did get over spray. So if you are gonna spray the fender wells, in, if you're gonna spray the fender wells directly with your, with your dressing, Keep in mind, you will get overspray on the fender. So once you're done, you have to go back, which you'll see later in the video, you'll have to go back and wipe down the fender, the uh, fenders, because overspray most likely got on the paints again. No big deal if it's water-based, it's no big deal, you literally just wipe it down. Just keep in mind, if you are spraying it directly onto the fender wheels, you will get overspray, as opposed to just spraying it to the towel or to the uh, applicator pad, and then dressing the tires or the uh, fender wheels.
and this is where I, again I come and this is just optimum no rinse that's my go-to for everything I just sprayed the fenders and just wiping it down because there was some overspray on the fenders And moving on again to the back fenders and doing the same thing because when you spray you are going to get overspray. And now it's time to clean the door jams. Now there's a lot of videos where you can either pressure wash it down or use the garden hose and rinse it down, get a brush, APC lather it up and get the suds going then rinse it off that's i used to do that as well but now i just go as straightforward as i can be and i use a towel and either apc or optimum no rinse and just literally wipe it down depending on how you know this, the condition it's in but right here i'm just using, literally spraying optimum no rinse onto my towel and then wiping everything down keeping it super simple and it's doing a great job i don't use brushes i don't use a pressure washer to rinse it down just not what i do And then working back to the trunk door jams and these were actually really uh, a lot worse um, than the uh, at least the bottom half of the door jams were, were a lot worse than the other doors I was working on Now one thing you could do that, that actually make life a little easier is if you start with the door jams and then wash the vehicle because at this point I already, I already washed the vehicle and waxed it but now I'm cleaning the door jams and just a little bit of dirt fell off onto the paint. No big deal whatsoever but perhaps if you wanted to test it out you could just try doing the door jam first and then start washing the vehicle. And then lastly gonna uh, clean this, uh, I forget what it's called, someone leave, someone leave it in the comments below. The um, I forgot this, the way, what it's called in the last video as well, so leave that comment down below on how, what, what it's called, I keep on forgetting, step rail, step, whatever, I'm cleaning that. Again, not going for perfection, if you like really inspected it, like it looks great there and that's like, that's what most customers are going to be happy with, it's just like at a glance, it looks really well and that's, that's you know, 80% of, 90% of customers are going to be happy with that, um, but there's definitely, you know, again, not going for perfection. I don't want you to think you have to go for, for perfection when someone calls you, out, calls you out to service their vehicle. They're mostly looking for something to look a lot better, not perfection, not show car ready, just hey, I want it to look better than what it is. And here, last thing I'm doing is, uh, before I start wrapping it up, it's, I'm gonna uh, just quickly clean the uh, exterior windows. Now again, this was just an exterior detail, a wash and a wax. Um, but because the windows were so dirty both inside and out, I quickly, uh, I, I very briefly touched up the, the interior windows uh, because you could just see so many smears and smudges uh, on the glass, even though it wasn't on the exterior, I had cleaned that. Um, it just it didn't look as good because the interior windows were, you know, really bad. So I just went ahead and quickly touched them up on the inside as well. And that's the after on the door jam. I'm gonna walk you through a quick uh, um, after. So this is, for the most part, I wrapped up the entire vehicle. The door jams looking great. Again, straight, just towel and uh, an O and R. They came out great. Then it's the wheels and tires. The, I dressed the, uh, I, I uh, 
use a towel to wipe down the, the fender wheels. Those are looking great. Same thing with the tires. They're looking snazzy, nice and dressed up. And then just a quick, a quick walkthrough with the, video, uh, with the vehicle. Now I shot this before I actually cleaned the door jam. So right now you're gonna see the door jams are so dirty. That's because I shot this before I cleaned the door jams. But anyway, you can see the exterior, how it's still clean, um, nice and uh, washed and waxed, well, wash plate and waxed. And the last step is here is the front grille, looking much, much better after that cleaning. Okay, and this last part is just me showing you, you know, how I move around and work as I'm wrapping it up, just to give you guys a better example of like how it is to actually work out there in the field. Uh, because I know when you're starting off, like you're very nervous, um, excited and nervous and kind of very cautious of how you work, how you interact with the clients, how you move around. So this is just strictly to show you like this is, you just move around. Like it's very simple, very straightforward. You don't need to get, you know, too crazy with like, it's just simple activity when you're on the field. Now the client had already paid me, so here I'm not gonna interact with the client. Uh, they, they paid me midway of the detail, so they already left. So it was just me cleaning up, finishing up the vehicle, and just you know directly leaving because they already paid me. They already knew it was gonna take place. I already knew where I was gonna leave the keys. So there was nothing to it just to wrap it up and get out of there. And then this is what I recommend you do every single time before you talk with a customer is wipe yourself down because you have the you have the brake dust, dirt, sweat. So make sure you like just spray water on your face and arms and just wipe yourself down so you're a bit more presentable with the customer. And here just moving the vehicle, locking it up, getting my phone, and taking a few before uh, after photos, and that's calling it a day. All right, and that wraps up this video. Hopefully you learned quite a few things. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave them down in the comments down below. I literally replied to now, it used to be 99.9, .9, now it's around 99.7% of our emails and comments that come my way. So leave any comments in the description box down below and I'll eventually get to them. Other than that, if you need help with your nine services that you wanna offer in your business, if you want that guide, uh, check the description box down below. Other than that, I will see you on the next one. Yep, that's what you do to get the shots. Come on. <laughs>